All right, so today we're gonna to talk about resistance band chest flies. I'm gonna talk about what makes them different than your standard form of chest flies like dumbbell machines, cable machine, why I think you get better engagement with these resistance band chest flies. And then I'm also gonna take you through a few different variations of resistance band chest flies that you can implement into your workout routines regardless of what type of anchoring situation that you have. So what makes resistance band chest flies different than all the rest of the chest flies? The big component here is the progressive resistance of the band. So what that means is the further I stretch this band, the more resistance it puts out. So here, low resistance, here, higher resistance. And that's totally dependent on which band that you use. Everyone has kind of a slightly different curve, but ultimately it has lower resistance at no stretch, higher resistance the further that you stretch it. And what's great about that in a chest fly is when you're doing this exercise, you're really weak on the outer portion of this rep. And then when you get to the center, your pecs kind of fully engage and you get a lot more strength available. So that basically the resistance band fits the biomechanics of this muscle group perfectly so that when you're at the full peak contraction, you get a lot of resistance and it's gonna feel a lot different than even a cable machine. This is very similar to a cable machine, but that progressive resistance is kind of what throws it over the edge. So if this is something that you like and you wanna see more stuff like this, make sure to like this video, subscribe, click the little bell to get notified, and then also drop anything that you have to say about this in the comments, particularly stuff that you would like to see next from us because we wanna to continue to develop this channel and develop more great content for you. All right, so here's the equipment we're gonna be using today. It's all by Clunch Fitness, of course, this is the Clunch Fitness channel. And we're gonna be using the 41 inch bands. You'll probably use somewhere from the orange all the way up to the blacks in this exercise, maybe even bigger depending on who you are. The other one is the Clunch Wall Anchor. This is a sturdy anchoring point that bolts directly to your walls, concrete or wood studs. I have a pattern of six of these in the Clunch Fitness gym. You, and if you can't use these kind of anchors, I would recommend using the anchor strap which allows you to pinch it into a door or wrap it around a tree or a squat rack or any kind of post-shaped object. And then last but not least, we're gonna be using the Clunch Fitness band handle. Now this piece of equipment is, sets everything apart when it comes to doing chest flies. And here's the reason. If I grab this band with my hand and I start doing a normal chest fly, I feel everything in the palm of my hand. And that's about the best way that you can grab onto this without using any kind of attachment. What this is gonna do, it's gonna limit my ability to go high resistance, and I'm more focused on this band is rubbing on my hand and my arms during the rep. That's one of the reasons why we developed the clench band handle. You slap this onto your bands, and immediately it takes all the stress off your hand, it feels like a cable machine, it spreads that band out so that it doesn't hit your arms, and you can focus more on the exercise. And you can even stack multiple resistance bands in here. So say I finished this set and I need to go higher, I just slap another band on and jump right into the next set. So we're gonna start with the bread and butter chest fly, which is the chest height bilateral fly. You have anchor points just about arms width apart. You're gonna grab your resistance bands with your handles, step out, you wanna get nice wide stance here, something to support your trunk because you're gonna to have to be doing a little bit of balancing. Arms slightly bent, level with your shoulders, reaching out, big squeeze, straightening your arms as you go. And at the top, you wanna to really squeeze those pec muscles. And then you're just gonna rep it out, big squeeze at the top, nice and controlled on the way down. Get as wide as you can. So another thing that I just want to point out is you can also change the angle of attack with these flies to target your upper or your lower pecs by low anchoring or high anchoring these. You can also really isolate them if you have an incline bench. You can set a bench up right here in between and do flies on the bench. That works really great for isolating. I do those a lot, but a lot of people don't, might not have a bench. So you, those are just a few other variations you can do with a bilateral movement. So next up, 
is the single arm fly. This works great if you really wanna isolate one side of your chest and if you only have one anchoring point to use, like if you're using the anchor strap in a door or something similar to that, you're not gonna be able to go as heavy because it's gonna engage a lot more of your trunk and stabilizer muscles to kind of keep you straight, but you can still get a really good isolation on this. So to start this, you grab your handle, step out away from your anchor point so that you get a good amount of tension on the band. You always want to have tension on the band. You never want it to slop at the end of the rep like this. Always get some preloaded tension on this thing. And then you're going to get yourself at a little bit of an angle. And the reason for the angle, it's about a 45 degree in relation to the band. The reason for the angle is so that when you get out here, the band isn't contacting your shoulder or your arms or anything. It's just giving you nice clean force without rubbing on anything. So you're going to get set up, get your angle, Again, neutral spine type core, arm slightly bent, and then you squeeze it all the way across. And with these, you can go beyond center. So you can go past that center point because you don't have your other arm to run into and really squeeze that pec muscle. Same style tempo before, control it on the way down, bring it across, rep it out. And again, make sure you got a nice wide stance to really be able to balance. I don't want you rotating like this. That's not good. Fix your hips, fix everything. The only thing that you're pivoting about is your shoulder joint. All right, so that's how you do a unilateral fly. All right, so the last variation I'm gonna show you is another form of the bilateral, but it's a single anchor point. It doesn't get you as much engagement or resistance in the right direction of force because your arms aren't wide, or your anchors aren't wide out, but you can still get a decent exercise out of this if you're limited in anchoring points. So to set these up, you're probably gonna have to go a little bit heavier, and you're also, you're gonna get a little bit more band contact with your body. The handles help to spread everything out, but you're still gonna get some more contact. So again, same setup as the bilateral before, except now the, the bands are directly behind you. Big squeeze out in front. And again, this is the same band that I had for the, the wide bilateral, and it it's just doesn't feel like enough resistance. So what you can do is jump up the band strength a little bit, and make sure that you get stepped out far enough away so that you have good tension to begin with. You're gonna, you might even wanna preload it a little bit more to get more tension. and that'll kind of get you the best bang for your buck with a single anchor point fly. All right, so to wrap this up, we just went through a few different variations of the resistance band chest fly. I recommend throwing these into your workouts, even if you're only a free weight trainer. Like, I love these exercises. I feel like they get a lot more engagement than any of the free weight flies that I do. You know, typically throw them in three to four sets at that 10 to 15 rep range. And then again, make sure that you increase your resistance with each set, and that's really gonna give you that core strength and mass building. All the equipment used today is gonna be linked in the description below. Make sure you like it and subscribe, and if you have any other questions, please drop something in the comments below, and thanks for watching.